Solar panels begin with a quartz-like sand material and a polysilicon. That polysilicon material is melted and grown into a single crystal ingot. That ingot is then sliced up into wafers. Those wafers are then processed uh, to make a photovoltaic semiconductor device, which turns light into electrons, namely the solar cell. And then that cell is assembled into the solar panels that you see on large solar farms and on people's roofs. At present, only about 3% of the world's ingot and wafer capacity exists in countries that don't apply significant tariffs to U.S. polysilicon. With less than 3% of the world's ingot capacity situated in regions without prohibitive tariffs on U.S. polysilicon, customers for U.S. polysilicon were quite scattered and scarce. In 2021, Jinko built a massive ingot and wafer facility in Vietnam, instantly doubling the customer base for U.S. polysilicon. We built a factory in Vietnam where we basically grow the crystal and cut the wafers. But what's unique about it now is that the polysilicon is coming from the U.S. It's going to the factory in Vietnam, and then we're growing the crystal, we're processing the cell, uh, we're boxing it up, and then we're shipping it back to the plant here in Jacksonville. So this has made us very independent in our process that we're vertically integrated and we're able to streamline our process for getting the material and finishing the product. Americans and the American industry has benefited from global trade and the solar industry in particular, but there's always an interest in US manufacturing. So Jinko established this factory here in Jacksonville in 2018 and has been assembling panels. And Jinko also has been extending that supply chain further by being able to make the ingot and the wafer from the polysilicon that is manufactured in the US. I think everybody who's dealing with the solar industry understands that the opportunity is huge in the USA, and we want to capture that opportunity, and we want to capture it as much as possible. So building this relationship with polysilicon producers in the US not only gives us the factory-to-factory -factory quality relationship that's easier to do when you're on the same continent, it cuts out some of the issues of the supply chain process, but more than anything else, we're enhancing our product by using more US-made materials in the finished product. And, and that's always a great selling point to the U.S. customers. While others are relying on incentives to build up these domestic capabilities, Jinko has done what it does best, listen to the market and build what customers want at scale and at light speed. Having operated factories in multiple continents, the idea of building up a diverse geographic supply chain is not foreign to Jinko. Polysilicon makers who had sought more global ingot manufacturing for several years now had a pioneering customer willing to go against the grain, enabling a supply chain that starts and ends right here in the U.S. It shows the power of bold thinking, manufacturing prowess, and commitment to customers. Global polysilicon makers, uh, particularly those in the US, have been seeking markets for their polysilicon in the solar industry. And it's not surprising that we've been received very well with our recent additions of capacity that enable them to sell and support the solar industry. Jinko is a global leader, an innovator, and historically has not only the best products, the most diverse products, but also the most diverse supply chain. And that move and the most recent moves are part of that package that actually makes Jinko an industry leader. I think from my own experience, 35 years of manufacturing in the U.S., the innovation and the teamwork that just naturally happens between companies in the U.S., it sparks creativity, it sparks innovation, it finds ways to do things cheaper, smarter, faster. So I think when we find suppliers that we can work with in the U.S., we just capture that whole uh, American innovation process and you marry that with all the innovation we've got from our own headquarters and all the resources we have there and you're just building a better product. So it, it's not about exclusion, it's about inclusion, you know, bringing these different products from different countries together to make the best product. Given that Jinko's operated factories on four continents and serves customers in more than 160 countries, it's not surprising that Jinko is interested in diversifying its manufacturing base. Jinko pays a lot of attention to its customers' needs. Uh, customers indicate a strong interest in this diversified supply chain, and Jinko has responded appropriately uh, with these investments uh, around the world.